Hello and welcome to our series on using Python to extract Jira data from Atlassian using a REST API. In this very short episode, we'll have two questions on the agenda. First of all, how are we going to do this? Um, that's exactly what are the steps that we need our script to perform. And the second question is what resources do we have available here? And that's so you can make sure that you have a similar setup and we're all working on the same uh, page here. So let's dive right into it. First question. Exactly how are we going to extract data from Jira using Python? Uh, well, our script needs to do three basic things. Firstly, it will log into Jira for us. Once it's authenticated there, uh, we can do step number two, which is to send out an HTTP request and get back an HTTP response. And that's a request for some data and a response with the data. And then once we have the data, we can do step number three, which is save the result into a CSV formatted file. Now that's it. It's uh, just three steps. It sounds pretty easy and, and actually it isn't too hard. Second question, what resources do we have? Well, I have a private network to simulate me working inside a company. And then I have two subnets, um, a resources subnet that would normally host the company's internal resources. We'll use it to host our Jira server. And then I also have a developer subnet that hosts uh, the client computer that I'm writing my software on. So the Jira server is a stock install of uh, Jira server downloaded from Atlassian. I haven't even changed the default credentials. When I logged into Jira for the first time, I chose the option which creates a sample project. And that gave me maybe five issues and a few comments entered into it. It wasn't enough though. So I entered a bunch more test users and had them log work and create comments back and forth. Then on the other side is my box. It runs Windows, and I downloaded and installed the Anaconda package, which gives me Python and, crucially, Jupyter Notebooks, which is what I'll be using to enter and test all my Python code. Uh, lastly, it's pretty important that I mention I've opened up port 2990 between these two subnets because that's the default Jira port. My um, development machine will use that port when talking to the Jira server. And you may want to check the URL that you use when you browse to Jira, I'll highlight where you can see the port in the Jira URL here. If there's none listed there, then you might be on port 80 if you're using HTTP or port 443 if you're using HTTPS. Those uh, are the defaults for those protocols. But you can always ask whoever manages the server in your IT department. And that's the whole setup. There's really not much to it. In the next episode, we'll jump into coding this little application. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you there. Bye.